Hey, what's up, everybody? Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and follow us for more third and long content. Yo, what's good, everybody? This is Eric Armstead. Welcome to another episode of Third and Long. Appreciate everybody supporting the show, uh, tapping in, liking, commenting, subscribing. Appreciate the fans as well, too. I uh, got an opportunity to, to see uh, some of you guys after our game against the Packers, sign a few autographs for those of you who wait outside of our our facility. And, you know, the support has been amazing. A couple of you guys told me you're going to check out the pod this week. So definitely appreciate you guys supporting and showing love um, as well. Uh, tough loss to the Packers. This one definitely hurt. It was it was a gut wrenching loss to to lose in that fashion on a you know game winning field goal. You know majority of the games are close to the NFL, but you know losing like that in a, in a hard fought back and forth uh, battle definitely doesn't feel great. You know it's it's getting getting your heart ripped right out of you, and um, you know just just looking at the week. You know, heading into this game, you know, coming back home from London, definitely dealing with a little bit of jet lag throughout the week. And, you know, the early parts of the week was, you know, really about getting our our bodies back and, and getting back on this time change. And, you know, a lot of the guys were were happy to be back home, sleep in their beds. You know, that was the probably the number one thing everyone was saying this week. Like, man, it feels good to be home. It feels good to be back in Jacksonville. You know, that that comfort, you know, being around your family again. And, you know, that was the the main thing, you know, guys were, I think, most excited about getting back home is just sleeping in your own bed and just how comfortable um, that can be being back home. And we had a good, great week of preparation. You know, the energy was definitely there coming off of a win. Uh, against the Patriots, you know there was a lot of energy at practice, a lot of a lot of excitement and a lot of joy. And you know the conversations we're we're having, you know me, Trevor, Foyer, Josh, whoever amongst our team is just how connected we feel. You know before this game and even after this game, how connected we feel and how how much better we feel like we've gotten, you know throughout this season and how you know how much more of a together group. Um, we feel, you know, feel way more united um, than we were to start the season and, and you know, didn't get the results that we wanted um, in the game against the Packers. Obviously, you don't play for for moral victories, but, you know, we, we definitely still feel like we're coming together. The game was a little different heading into a game against a team with a great record, a, a, a good team, a playoff team last year and a team who, you know, is is looking like they're a playoff team this year and, and a great team. The game started off, it was a scoreless first quarter. Anytime a game kind of starts off like that, it's, it's you know, for us defensively, we're trying to keep that going and, and find ways to get stops. And offensively, you know, they're trying to find, our offense is trying to find how to get going and, and uh, cap kind of capitalize on some of the things that we were doing defensively. You know, we started off punt, punt, interception. And, you know, a big thing that we talked about is, you know, our offense started off punt, punt, interception too. And so the game was not being complimentary uh, on our side um, of, of what we wanted, you know. And the we were just kind of waiting for that that big play to, to kind of change the game. And, you know, throughout a game uh, in the NFL, you know, there's going to be two or three deciding deciding plays. And, you know, early in the game, you know, we got an interception and then we threw an interception, but their interception got them into into scoring position and, and they were able to get their first score. And so playing complimentary football like that is is, you know, the expectation, you know, for us is, you know, if we get a get an interception is to give the ball to our offense and then you guys go down and score. So to start off the game a little a little slow and try to find you know how who who when and where was going to take over the game and take control of the game you know that's that's kind of how those that feeling of that game kind of starts off and you know really it was a it was a back and forth game you know super intense game you know a big thing that we talked about uh, on the sideline defensively was you know they had 40 plays in the first half which is which is pretty uncommon 
Um, and I'm on the sideline. I'm I'm looking at Led and and looking at Trayvon. I'm like, bro, this this half is mad long. Like this is this half's taking forever. It seemed like. And looking at the you know drives of the game and, and the the snap count and like you could see it was forty plays in the first half and it was definitely um, a long first half a back and forth game and you know for us it was very important for us to to start fast uh, especially defensively you know we feel like in these past games we haven't you know got off the field on the first drive and you know we've been letting them score on the first drive and you know that can spiral but. You know, even though they move moved the ball, you know, a little bit on us, we got off the field and you know, that was that was the goal to to start fast and to set the tone. You know, this game, you know, we kind of took it as disrespect. Typically, whenever a team wins the coin toss, they defer and they want the offense, then you know, they want to kick first and put their defense out there um and then try to lap you in the second half by getting the ball back, but Green Bay, they wanted the ball. I guess they wanted to to try to set the tone of the game, you know, and as a defense, you got to take that as disrespect. And we went out there and got off the field. But it's very important, you know, to to set the 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 tone of the game to, you know, let them know like, hey, this is this is what this type of game is going to be uh about and not let them, you know, get going and and put their offense in a bad rhythm. And so, um getting off the field was was key for us and important and we took it personal. Football is football is a game of highs and, and lows and and you know weathering the storm at times and, and riding off momentum and you know it was kind of a weird series uh, of plays for in the game uh, where we got an interception a huge interception by J Dub uh, they drove the ball got into you know our red zone and, and J Dub made an uh, acrobatic um, great coverage acrobatic catch got both feet in and that's a huge momentum shift. You know, we were excited. We celebrating in the end zone. You know, that was J Dub's first career interception, I believe. A young rook who's extremely talented is going to have a hell of a career. And then, you know, we we come out on offense, and then we turn the ball over and, and right back to them. And you know, so it's it's the swings and the momentum shifts of the game. Um, one thing you know, always that we started doing as a defense is. Um, whenever there's a turnover on offense, we get together, we get in a huddle, um, and we break it down, you know, because setting the intentions for when you run out on that field after a turnover is very important. And our goal is to always give us an inch, defend an inch, you know, they keep them to three, force them to kick a field goal, keep points off the board. Um, that's always the mentality is get off the field. Never worried about, you know, what's going on. Um, on the other side of the ball. But when we have an opportunity to take that field, what do we do with it? And, you know, that's just the next play mentality you have to have in the NFL because the momentum shifts are so crazy in this game. We let up two scores in a row on defense. And, you know, when when that happens, it can it can seem demoralizing. Um, you feel like, you know, what's what's going on? You know, we're, we're start searching for answers, but you have to have a next play mentality and, and you know, our you know, sideline. Um, we didn't blink, man. I think we've gone through so much adversity already throughout this season that has continued to bring us closer. And and when, you know, things don't go on our way um throughout the game, if they get a score, whatever it is, man, it's it's next play. It's it's a it's a long game. The NFL, you know, it's 60 minutes for a reason. Um so we're on the sideline. We go to get you know, go to our benches, huddle up, regroup. Everyone remind each other to to do your job, um, not try to make anything up, not trying to overcorrect, you know, any mistakes or anything. Um, and I think what we saw on, on, you know, a few of those drives were, were tackling. A lot of tackling issues. And that was one of our keys. You know, each week we have keys to victory. And defensively, this week our keys to victory were tackling, ball disruption, and pursuit you know, stopping the run game and, um, you know, tackling was a key, key to victory. And, and I don't feel like it was our best tackling performance. And especially on that 38, uh, yard touchdown by Josh Jacobs. Um, there was a few missed tackles on that play, you know, so, so what do you do in those moments? You know, you, you, you come to the sideline and you don't make stuff up. You, you realize, you know, what, what the errors were and, and, you know, you try to get to correct them, you stick together. Uh, you remind each other it's a long game. 
um, a lot of football left to be played, and uh, you got an opportunity to do something about it. On the offensive side of the ball, I think that throughout the game, you know, it, it was a hard-fought battle for them as well, too. A lot of ups and downs, you know, a lot of injuries, a lot of adversity that they dealt with. Turnovers, you know, were key to overcome penalties and, um, you know, kind of shooting themselves in the foot on offense, but f- figuring it out and trying and finding a way to to overcome it. I think uh, we digged ourselves in a, in a pretty big hole, though. But the effort by the guys was was tremendous. I don't think people realize how hard it is to to lose three receivers to injury um, in a game. You know, it's it's your complete game plan, personnel. You know, you have to go to more tight end packages, and um, it just completely changed your passing game. And you know, for them to go down and and have multiple drives, moving the football with injuries out there and and down to two receivers was was amazing to see. And guys stepped up big and and made plays. And, you know, after putting yourself in a hole, turnovers and things like that, stepping up and and making plays to to keep yourself in the game was commendable. You know, no moral victories, but they definitely showed a lot of resiliency. Um, They showed what they're capable of. They showed, you know, just what you can do in those key moments. You know, I think Trevor made some made some mistakes, but also he made some tremendous plays out there, getting the ball into to playmakers' hands and and guys stepping up who weren't even, you know, really expecting to to play much uh on offense. Parker Washington, Tim Jones, you know, those guys, you know, were thrust into a position that they weren't expecting. Evan touchdown down the stretch was, you know, one of the best plays. I think of our season. Guys stepping up, you know, was was great to see. It it it, it inspired us defensively to to try to go out there and get a stop and get the ball back into their hands. And you know, those guys started to pick it up um, when we needed it the most down the stretch. Games like this, you know, could have easily have gone gone the other way, got out of our hands. You know, you know, I think in the past, a game like this could have spiraled on us as a team if we you know haven't had that resiliency and, and built up some adversity. Um, throughout the season, you know, could have gone, you know, uh, uh, turned into a blowout for us, especially the position that we put ourselves in um, at times defensively and and on offense uh, with turnovers and and explosive plays. And so could have been a lot worse, but the resiliency we showed to to uh, stay in the fight. And that's what we were talking about on the sidelines as a team, you know, stay in the fight, keep going. It's It's a long game. You know, I think that that had to be built over time. Um, that trust in one another and that resiliency, and you know, there's only one way to, only one way to really get that is to go through some some hard, tough times and some hard stuff together, um, and that brings you closer together as a team. And like I said, it could have been a lot worse. We put ourselves in position, you know, late in the game to 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 win, um, and we didn't get it done. They made a couple more plays than us, um, but you know, I think that. Talking to the rest of the guys and talking to you know everybody uh, around our team, you know after a loss like this, the 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 sentiment, and the feel we have for each other is is you know that we're right there and we're 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 getting better and we're getting closer and and all these different things that we're going through is 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 driving us together even more. So you got to stick with the fight, man. It's it's uh it's tough, you know to you know, not get the results that you feel that you deserve by the work that you're putting in, but you got to keep up with the fight. One big piece of this game was Jordan Love going down and Malik Willis coming in and the changes at the quarterback position for us defensively. You know, it became two different two different types of games. I, t- I talked about it on our, you know, pregame uh, episode of, of how efficient the Green Bay offense was um, with their quick game, staying on track with the run game and how you know, it's it's hard to get them in third and long, but that's where they struggle. And that's where, you know, your goal should to try to get them in. I feel like they were staying on that game plan, mix and run, pass, um, RPO looks with Jordan Love. But when he went down, you know, the game kind of shifted. Malik Willis is a different style of quarterback than Jordan Love. And uh, we knew that it was going to be a lot more run game. It was going to be a lot more quarterback running around, you know, that was something we weren't expecting, but you have to make those adjustments on the fly. And, and 
you know, we knew what type of game it would become uh, if he came into the game because he's played, I believe, two games for them uh, earlier in the season when when Jordan Love went down. So we could see on tape what type of game it was going to become. You know, you know, hats off to him too as well too of of um, coming in and making those um, adjustments when he wasn't necessarily expecting to have to come in and, and expect Jordan Love to get hurt. And they made, you know, plays down the stretch. They did some very uh, kind of unique things and, and, you know, giving us multiple looks with with different options of, you know, giving us a run play and then giving us the same formation with a, a leak off of it, which, you know, was that last big play that they had to uh, number 11. So, they they kind of changed things up um, and were able to, you know, move the ball effectively. You know, that's tough. That's tough uh, on a defense to, you know, kind of have two different styles of game plan prepared. Um, we knew the game that it, it wouldn't just be, a you know, a drop back pass game, that it was going to be a different type of game. And, um, you know, hats off to them for, for coming in and, and making those adjustments. And for us down the stretch, I feel like we adjusted well. Um, we got some stops, but there was moments where, you know, they got us and they made plays and, you know, we didn't make uh, enough plays to win the game in the end. The game came down to the fourth quarter and, you know, the rally that our offense made going uh, on that huge drive uh, that ended with uh, Evan Inger touchdown. Um, the energy, man, in the stadium was was crazy. Uh, on that drive, everyone was was uh, on the edge of their chairs. You know, even when we got down before that, um, and before that drive, and and after that fumble, you know, I said to Trevor on the sideline, like, "Let's go, man. We it's a lot of game left. We got opportunity. I think we may have been down ten at that time. We got an opportunity to to still do something about it. So let's go, man. And you know, I have the ultimate confidence in in my teammates and the guys I take the field with. You know, these are some of the best players in the league and guys that I've been around. You know, I've talked about it with a few of my teammates of how, you know, because I've been on some, some you know, not so good teams record-wise, and there's, the feeling is different because when we look around and we look at each other, we know what we have from a talent standpoint. We know the, the type of football players that we have, and I feel like we can win any game. I still feel that way um, because I know what we have amongst our team, and I know uh, the guys that we have on our roster, and and that's the type of belief I go into with the game, you know, when, when we take the field. And so the big play of the game, obviously, was the long pass to, to Jaden Reed. And um, a lot of people, are, you know, are going to wonder, you know, how does a how does a guy get that open? And, you know, how do how does a play like that happen? And, you know, first things first things first, just a little bit of football one on one. You know, the offense's job is to create you know, deception, you know, to to create gray area, to create a little bit of uh, bad eyes or, you know, poor technique and, and steps. And and so they do that in a multitude of ways. You know, they, they give different looks to you, different formations. They shift, trade, motion. They, they all, all they're trying to do in the run game is get a guy out of a gap. All they're trying to do in the pass game is to get you know, create space for for one of their one of their receiving options, and you know, you do that by moving guys around. You do that by making defenders have to communicate and and switch and and rotate and and doing all these different things. And you know, on that play specifically, the play before they came out in the same formation and they ran a run play to Josh Jacobs. They came out in that play. Same formation, gave the same look. And Jaden Reed, the play before, he blocked in the run play. And on that one, uh, where he was open, he blocked down on the defensive end, kind of acted like it was a run play, and then he leaked across the formation. And when that happens, that's how you see guys running wide open. There's That's not the first leak play ever invented. That's not the first leak play that uh, has been successful in the NFL. It's... It's a play that teams do, um, and it's all about eye discipline. It's all about can we deceive a defender on here and, and create an open guy and, and make them, you know, not get their man and by by the the type of look that we're giving them. And that's what happened on that play. Jaden Reed blocked down on our on a Trayvon, I believe, our defensive end, um, acted like it was a run play, and then he leaked out. 
um, across the formation. You know, that's a play that we have to be better on. You know, obviously we want to eliminate explosives. Um, and when you have to make a team drive the ball down the field, and that's where offenses struggle. But if you give it to them easy and if there's, you know, multiple explosives uh, in a drive, then that's going to lead to scores. And, you know, they, they did a good job there um, getting out on that league play and created some confusion amongst our coverage guys. And, and um, he was able to get free and, and open. And, you know, we have to be better and, and, and learn from it and clean up those coverage communications and issues um, that offenses try to create. Super proud uh, of this team uh, still, you know. Like I said, no moral victories, but the fight and the resolve we showed, you know, to to be down in that fashion and, and not give up on ourselves and keep fighting and put, and put ourselves in position down the stretch to, to, to win a game like that against a great team. Um, who was, you know, five and two heading in, into this game, you know, extremely proud. I feel like we didn't win, but we brought brought ourselves closer together, showing that type of resolve. And, you know, a lot of the other guys echoed that sentiment as well, too. You know, how even in a loss like this, you could feel yourself getting better and your teammates becoming closer. So definitely proud of that. You know, pregame, I broke down the Packers and they pretty much uh, spot on, you know, did what we thought they were going to do or what I saw on film. The ball was out quick. Jordan Love, quick game. They're going to run the ball, get it in third and manageable, and they were going to quick game you and, and run RPO and get the ball in Josh Jacobs' hands. And, you know, for the most part, that's what they did was some, some change-ups. Once Malik Willis came in the game, you know, a little bit a little bit more QB run, but pretty much similar thing as well, too. You know, for a huge portion of the game, I think we defended it pretty well. And for some chunk plays, some explosive plays, you know, that's where we got to be better. And tackling too. I think the tackling was, wasn't was good enough. The tackling led to leaky yardage. The tackling led to, you know, big plays as well too. And so those are the two areas, explosive plays um, as a defense and tackling where we uh, weren't our best, but there was there was a hell of an effort out there, and there was some amazing, spectacular plays as well, too, that uh, were made. Transitioning into next week, our next opponent, the Philadelphia Eagles, Sunday evening. It was supposed to be Sunday night. They flexed us out of the primetime slot. One of the opportunities to, to play, you know, in that primetime game always, you know, to show the world what you can do. But nonetheless... Four o'clock kickoff uh, against the Philadelphia Eagles, a team who has been, you know, very good these past few years and, and are having a good season as well this year. A super talented team, offensively and defensively. We're going to have a huge challenge on our hands. You know, Philly is a tough place to play. You know, has been, you know, they have the the mystique about them of of their fans and, you know, what type of, you know, town it is. and and. You know, I'm excited about it. I'm excited to get up there and, and, and take the field. Huge opportunity on our hands. Yet again, another week where, you know, the mindset is to to go 1-0. You know, the Eagles have a great offensive line. Jalen Hurts, great quarterback. Added Saquon Barkley, one of the best running backs in the league, um, which has made them even more dangerous. Playing against Philly, it seems like I played them, I think, the past... Three, four years for me. And um, one thing about them is you know what they're going to do. They're going to be in shotgun. They're going to run uh, QB zone read. They're going to run inside zone. And they're going to run RPO game. They have talent outside of the wide receivers with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. And, you know, with the uh, with RPO and, and the quarterback run game, with Hurts being able to use his feet, that adds an extra element. Um, and it takes, you know, an extra gap or a defender, you know, kind of out of coverage to be able to defend the, the the zone read and the QB run game as well, too. And, you know, that's how they, they put pressure on defenses. And, you know, so I'm excited to for this week of preparation to get down and, and study our game plan and how we plan on executing and, and stopping this team. You know, it's going to be another hard-fought battle, you know, where we're going to have to each week lay it on the line, give it all we got. You know, not looking too forward, you know, focus purely on this game and, you know, some must win for us by any means. However, we have to get it done. We got to get a win. And what better place to do it <laughs> than in Philly? You know, hostile 
environment on the road, you know, coming out of there with a win would be an amazing feeling for our team. You know, it won't be easy. It's going to definitely be earned. We don't have no choice. We got to be up for it. You know, I'm excited and ready to to get this week going. Turn the page uh, from last week. You know, you have to have short-term memory loss. Uh, You can't let these losses linger or they can um, spiral downhill. And so, you know, we're shifting our focus to the Eagles. Great team going up there on the road. And I can't wait to get it going. Shifting to some news around the league. Um, Everyone saw the crazy Hail Mary play. Uh, made by Jaden Daniels and the Commanders. You know, it seems seems like some crazy stuff happens in the NFL every year, but I can't remember a Hail Mary that crazy in a in a long time. You know, the Commanders are having a, gr- a great season. Seem like they're having a a new sense of energy over there. The rookie quarterback Jaden Daniels is playing playing phenomenal football. And got that team is inspired. But one of the craziest you know plays Hail Mary passes I've seen during my time in the league, you know, the only other one, you know, a lot of the other ones I can think of is A-Rod has made a lot of crazy ones throughout the years. But yeah, man, that was, that was wild. After the Hail Mary was completed, it was definitely a teachable moment for Bears defender Tyreek Stevenson. He was taunting the, the, the crowd before that play. And, you know, that's, that's one thing I've learned uh, throughout sports is that especially the NFL has a 100% humbling rate. You will be humbled at some point throughout your NFL career. But I know that was a terrible feeling for him. And, you know, like they always say, you know, it's never over until it's over. And so, you know, stay locked in throughout the game. You know, don't let your guard down. Anything is truly possible in this league. And, and you know, so that's that's a lesson learned for him. I heard that he's he's a great player and and – you know, a young player, and I'm sure he'll learn from this. But, you know, message to all you out there, young, aspiring athletes, to stay locked in throughout the game, man. It's never over till it's over. You will be humbled at some point. So before you, you know, get too cocky and feel like, yeah, you know, you if you want to pop it, you could pop, you could pop it. But at some point, you're going to get humbled and you're going to have to you know, face the music and eat your words. So, so just remember that before, you know, you pop and pop and mess. Tua was back out on the field. Definitely good to see him back out on the field. You know, there was a lot of conversation of whether he should continue to play and people trying to make it, tell him what to do. And, and, you know, whatever, obviously the decision he made to come back out and play was the best for him and his family. And I'm happy to see that he was back out there doing what he loves to do. Um, hopefully, hopefully, he stays healthy and is safe out there and, you know, is able to continue his career. And, 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 you know, I know that if he's in the NFL that, you know, he loves it and he has a, you know, deep passion for it. He wouldn't have reached the level of success that he has without that. And so um, I'm, all, I'm always a believer in, in do what you love to do. And, you know, so I'm happy to see him back, back out on the field, having fun and, you know, hoping that it stays that way and, and that he's, you know, healthy and, and safe. DeAndre Hopkins' trade to the Chiefs was made big news um, this week. The Chiefs, obviously, you know, two-time or back-to-back uh, Super Bowl champions. And it, it seems to me like they're going all in for a three-peat. Traded for DeAndre Hopkins, also traded for Sleeper. You know, I know the DeAndre Hopkins trade got a lot of made headlines, but the Josh Uche trade, um, I think is very uh, big trade for them as well too, and really a sleeper trade. Josh Uche is amazing pass rusher, super talented, and you know he he really reminds me of one of my former teammates, D Ford, who was an all time you know great chief and had a lot of success with the Chiefs as well too. They wear the same number, they got the same get off, same speed, they rush real similar. And so adding a guy like that is going to be tough. And I know what, you know, a, a speed guy like that off the edge can do for your pass rush because D Ford opened up my game tremendously, making those tackles kick and giving me space to work in the middle. And, you know, a guy like that paired with what else, all the other, you know, players that they have, Chris Jones and Carl Loftus and, you know, all the other uh, rushers they have is is – you know, can be very dangerous and he's going to open it up a lot for them. And so 
Seems like they're gearing up and, and going all in for a three-peat and making some big moves before the trade deadline. Appreciate you tapping in for another episode of Third and Long. This is Eric Armstead. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Big news coming up. I'm going to start having some of my teammates on the show get back into some interviews and, and learning more about you know some of your favorite Jags players and guys around the league as well, too. So go ahead and in the comments, you know, who should be on the show first? Uh, really excited to be, you know, adding that back to the show. And, and it's going to be a lot of fun coming up here soon.